Tell me what's going to happen tonight. So tonight the London Sinfonietta are playing uh, music for 18 musicians and as part of the concert I'm going to play uh, Electric Counterpoint, which is another Steve Reich piece. R written originally, I think, for Pat Metheny, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. I've spent many hours watching performances of him play it on YouTube, trying to see how he, he did it. For people who don't know it, what kind of a piece is it and what was Reich's you know, intention in it? Okay, so you have to pre-record 12 guitars, 12 electric guitars and two electric bass guitars, and then you play one live on top. Um, and what happens is while you're playing the solo, you hear the pre-recorded guitars picking up little melodies that you're playing and then repeating them over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a, like a lot of his work, it's a kind of mesmerising piece, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's all about repetition with slight variations. Yeah. What, what was your way in? Because you, you were, I mean, my, my Radio 3 and the Record Library were my, way, my ways into modern classical music. What, what were your ways in? What was the stuff that got you interested? Um, French composer called Messian, um, it's the first kind of living composer I got uh, obsessed with, and then Penderecki, yeah, just things like that. But it, it's it's seeing this stuff live that's really changed it for me. And Tell us about that, yeah, because I've heard you say that. Yeah, yeah, it's just I was certainly raised to, to trust recordings and believe that they were, you know, what an orchestra sounds like, and were a good substitute for seeing the real thing. Um, but now I'm getting to see lots of live classical music. You realise. It's, it's a much different thing, a much more exciting thing to see, to be in a room with. That it's more alive and more, you know, muscular, yeah. dynamic, whatever, yeah? For sure, you can see what's going on, it sounds better, it's, it's a very strange thing. I think we've become so used to recording and so separated from the live performance of, of classical music that I don't, you're not prepared for the strangeness of it. I still find yeah. it very odd and a bit embarrassing even when you, you in, in a room and watching you know, live musicians play. It's, it's odd, it's not like a rock gig, there's no PA and there's no... It's kind of... It's just more personal somehow. Yeah, no. yeah. And I, I come to see a lot of classical music here, at the Bridgewater Hall in Manchester, and what I've noticed as someone who didn't grow up going to classical concerts at all, I grew up with rock music and it's been lately, you can actually, and I think you mentioned this just then, I find watching it helps me understand the music better because I can see where it's going, literally. I can see, oh, th that has gone from the strings yeah. and he's being picked up in the percussion or the brass or whatever. Yeah, yeah that's certainly true of Steve Rice because it's all about effort and muscle and that's why it came to life for me. It was seeing the same piece, uh, Music for 18 Musicians in America, and it was, you realise the amount of industry involved yeah and you know there's one guy playing marimba and he has to play off the beat for minutes on end and it's just it, you see this this sort of his muscle straining and the sinews going and it's and it's all about kind of effort and concentration and, and sweat and it's when you're listening on headphones to a piece of classical music you just you, you, you kind of have no idea it's a little window on, into the real thing you know has it ever made you think and I mean, you're, well, you're in a rock band that isn't in this kind of category. You are a, a challenging and adventurous rock band. But sometimes it's made me think, and it makes me think with rock fans, when they say, our oh, classical music is a bit prissy. I want to say to them, it sometimes makes you realise how conservative yeah. rock music is when you see what happens in the aegis of classical music. Would you agree? That's really interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, this is something I changed my mind about the whole time. Okay. I kind of bewail the fact that two guitars, bass and drums is such an old-fashioned format. I mean, it's like very weird that bands starting today pick up two guitars, bass and drums. But having said that, when I'm alone with a drummer and I've got a guitar to play, that can be the most exciting yeah. way to make music. So, no. Well, it, I suppose form is like that. You go back, don't you? You go back and you reinvent the form, like in a way, the classical, in a way, the classical world. Some people will do extremely out there things, and some people will just say, I'm going to go back to the piano. Sonata, yeah. or I'm going to go back to the string quartet and bring something new to it, you know, the traditional forms. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. You can, there are new ways to play the guitar and there are new ways to write music for, for violins. They're just a few hundred years older, yeah. you know. When, I remember reading, um, as, a, as a teenage prog fan, I remember reading Keith Emerson when he wrote a piano concerto saying that he encountered from classical musicians at the time a bit of a sort of, oh, who does this rock guy think he is? Now, do, have you ever encountered anything like that? Um... No, because I think all classical composers I've met have grown up with rock music anyway. Right, so it's, yeah. it's not like something they've avoided and they're often into the same records anyway. Yeah. You know.
Yes, I, yeah. I think it's become far more universal in the last like 30 years, really. Uh, last week on the show, we had Oliver Coates on, the oh, wow. cellist, and uh, he was telling us that you're working on a piece for him with, with two bows. Two bows, that's right. Yeah, he, he manages to play all four strings, and it's, it, it looks bizarre, but sounds sounds amazing. How's it going? It's probably not difficult enough at the moment. I need to... I, I always <laughs> kind of... It's very egotistical, but I figure that if I, could, if I couldn't possibly play it, then no one can. I kind of don't quite realise how what amazing things he can do right so and I'm wary of just using that for the sake of it you know putting things in that are hard to play just to and what, did, what instruments did you learn about in your first you know when you first began to pick up instruments uh, so the recorder right and I took it very seriously and yeah. when all my friends stopped playing sensibly at the age of you know seven probably or eleven I carried on I played in record, teenage recorder groups until I was 17, 18, and I still play it. Fantastic. There's even bits of recorder on Radiohead records, like the Benz, and oh. so, yeah, I just have never learned to be ashamed of playing any instrument. Yeah. However, and I, my idea of heaven on tour is to go into instrument shops and buy foolish things, like in Prague I bought a bladder pipe, that's probably the stupidest instrument I ever bought, <laughs> which... <laughs> It's kind of as terrible as it sounds, is it? and I've never used it. But then, you could become yeah. Rock's first bladder pipe hero. <laughs> yeah, it could. Have a terrible sound. It sounds as bad as it looks. Yeah. You're, you're very into the Arnd Martino, aren't you? That's an unusual. I am. Instrument. Yeah, that's that's the one I've kind of taken seriously, aside from the guitar. Yeah. Um, especially with Radiohead, um, just because it's like a it's an electronic sort of violin I suppose yeah. is how you describe it except you play it with a piece of string and your finger and it looks like a piano crossed with a yeah it's, it's indescribable it's I'll come and tell you but it sounds like someone singing it sounds like um you know the theme tune for uh, Star Trek mm -hmm. it sounds like a lady singing it's that yeah. kind of sound yeah thank you for taking the time to do this I'm going to let you go but I've got to ask you what's the, what Radiohead is there any new Radiohead activity on the horizon yes yeah, so we start up in September um playing rehearsing recording uh, yes and, and see how it's sounding fantastic very much looking forward to this thanks Johnny great nice to meet you